हेलो माय डियर क्यूरियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार्म वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज दिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम अगेन स्टूडेंट्स इन माई सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर फोर्टी थ्री दैट इज द डायरेक्ट एंड इनडायरेक्ट हर्निया इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न द इनडायरेक्ट और ऑब्लिक हर्निया डायरेक्ट हर्निया डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग फीचर्स बिट्वीन इनडायरेक्ट एंड डायरेक्ट इनगोन हर्निया डिफ्रेंसेज बिट्वीन द इंटरसिल एंड ओमेंटोसिल डिफ्रेंशियल डायग्नोसिस ऑफ द इनक्रिप्टेड हाइड्रोसिल ऑफ द कॉर वेरिकोसिल ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द हर्निया ऑपरेटिव ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द हर्निया लाइक हर्नियोटॉमी हर्नियोरफी एंड हर्नियोप्लेस्टी सो स्टार्ट विथ मी फर्स्ट द इनडायरेक्ट और ऑब्लिक इनगोनल हर्निया इन इनडायरेक्ट इनगोनल हर्निया द कंटेंट ऑफ द एबडोमेन एंटर द डीप इनगोनल रिंग एंड ट्रांसफर्स द होल लेंथ ऑफ द इनगोनल कैनल टू कम आउट थ्रू द सुपरफिशियल इनगोनल रिंग दिस इज अ मच मोर कॉमन दैन डायरेक्ट इनगोनल हर्निया दिस हर्निया यूजली ऑकर्स वेन देर इज अ परफॉर्म सैक ऑफ पर्टिकुलरली ऑफ कंप्लीटली पेटर्न प्रोसेस फॉर जर्नलिस्ट After birth, these processes, progenesis becomes obliterated in normal individuals. Indirect inguinal hernia is more commonly seen on right side, particularly in children. Hernia is more common on right side due to later descent of the right testes. According to the extent of the hernia, can be classified into three groups. First is a bivalvocal. Hernia is limited in the inguinal canal, and the process progenesis is closed at the superficial ring. Second is the funicular hernia. The process of analysis is closed at its lower end just above the epididymis so the content of the hernia can be felt separately from the testes and the testes below the hernia third according to the extent of the hernia third is the complete or vaginal hernia this process of analysis is the pattern throughout the hernial sac is continuous with the tunica vaginalis of the testes the hernia descends down to the bottom of the scrotum lying in front and the sides of the testes it is congenital hernia commonly encountered in the children dear students here is a good picture of the hasselbeck triangle showing the inferior epigastric vessels the deep inguinal ring and the inguinal ligament in white in color rectus abdominis muscles the superficial inguinal ring and the spermatic cord here is a medially the inferior epigastric vessels laterally the rectus abdominis at the lower side inguinal ligament here is a clear cut hasselbeck triangle which is the weakest part of the abdominal wall this is the typical picture of the indirect hernia showing the sac and the content of the sac that is the inguinal hernia the loop of the intestine is seen in the sac now the covering of the indirect inguinal hernia from inside to outside hernial sac is covered by the following structures peritoneum extra peritoneal fat in internal spermatic fascia cremasteric fascia external spermatic fascia superficial fascia and the skin now the next entity of the hernia is the direct inguinal hernia a direct inguinal hernia protrudes through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal medial to the inferior epigastric vessels that is through the hasselbeck triangle such hernia lies outside the spermatic cord either behind or above or below the cord so during operation the most important differentiating features is that the neck of the direct hernia lies medial to the inferior epigastric vessels whereas the neck of the indirect hernia lies lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels this point should be noted a direct inguinal hernia is acquired with the sole exceptions of a rare type in which there is a small rigid circular orifice in the conjoint tendon just lateral to where it inserts with the rectus sheath that is the ogilvy hernia direct hernia is much rare and constitutes only 15% of all cases direct hernia is always an acquired type except the ogilvy hernia and occurs in the elderly persons direct hernia is almost always occurs in men direct hernia is rarely attains a large size it never descends into the scrotum because there is no direct connection as the neck of the direct hernia sac is wide is rarely get strangulated here is a typical picture of differentiating the both types of the hernia direct and indirect you can see clearly there is a direct sac from the hasselbeck triangle and there is a content is going through the deep inguinal ring also the same image which uh, showing the differentiation between the indirect versus direct inguinal hernia now the differentiating features between the indirect and direct inguinal hernia are in indirect hernia occurs at any age common in children 
and young adults and in direct hernia usually elders affected in direct hernia males and females ratio are 20 as to 1 and direct hernia females are not affected in direct hernia 2 to 3 to 3 cases unilateral 1/3 cases 2/3 cases unilateral 1/3 cases bilateral common on right side due to the lateral descents of right side testis in the direct hernia half of the cases are bilateral caused by the poor abdominal musculature in the indirect hernia the hernia is complete piriform shape incomplete oval shape in the direct hernia always incomplete and spherical shape indirect hernia descends obliquely downwards and medially in the direct hernia appears as the forward bulge indirect hernia to be reduced by the patient or a doctor and direct hernia automatically reduces when lies down indirect hernia impulse on cupping put in index finger on the deep ingual ring and middle finger over the superficial ring patient is asked to cup if impulse is felt on the index finger it is an indirect hernia and in the direct hernia the impulse felt on the middle finger it is the direct hernia in indirect hernia invalidation test when the little finger enter the inguinal ring goes upwards and backwards and outwards it is an indirect hernia and impulse felt in the tip of the finger and in the direct hernia if the little finger goes directly backwards it is the direct hernia ask the patient to cup impulse felt on the pulp of the fingers in the indirect hernia ring occlusion test indirect hernia will not bulge out a thumb is pressed on the deep inguinal and in the direct hernia will show a bulge medial to the occluding finger now the clinical features first history age is most important in both hernia occupation strenuous work is often responsible for development of hernia symptoms common symptoms discomfort or pain lump systematic symptoms obstructing the lumen of the intestine pain vomiting abdominal distension and absolute constipation other complaints like persistent coughing or or whooping cough or chronic bronchitis constipation dysuria due to bph benign prostatic hypertrophy or urethral stricture next the past history should be taken whether the patient had any operation or not that is the for the incision hernia local examination first in standing then in supine position Majority of the hernias are better examined in the standing position. Two classical signs of an uncomplicated hernia are impulse on cupping and reducibility. Now the next point is the difference between the endoseal and the omentoseal are endoseal on inspection may be visible peristalsis and in the omentoseal peristalsis is never seen. Endoseal consistency elastic. Omento in the omentoseal it the consistency is duffy and granular. The reduction in the endoseal is easily first part difficult to reduce last part which slips in easily while reduction a gurgling sound where the in the omentoseal the reduction is difficult and the first part glows in easily last part result to be reduced no gurgling sound is heard in the endoseal percussion produce a resonant note and where the omentoseal on the percussion we reveals the dull note in the endoseal auscultation may hear peristaltic sound and in the omento seal no peristaltic sound can be heard on the auscultation now here is a good picture showing the complete hernia a good picture now this is the omento seal other an omentum in the omento seal in the hernial sac is clearly seen in this image now the rare varieties of inguinal hernia are sliding hernia a piece of extra peritoneal bowel may slide down into the inguinal canal pulling a sac of peritoneum with it in such a hernia the cecum on the right side the pelvic colon on the left side or the urinary bladder on either side may slide down now the next rare variety of the inguinal hernia are the interstitial hernia the hernia sac lies in between the muscle layer of the abdominal wall the hernia is usually incomplete it is commonly associated with an undescended testis according to the position of the hernial sac can be classified into preperitoneal or interparietal and the extraparietal preperitoneal or the intraparietal sac lies between the peritoneum and the fascia transversalis interpar interparietal sac lies between the internal oblique muscles and the external oblique aponeurosis and the third type is the extraparietal that is the sac like lies outside the external oblique aponeurosis in the subcutaneous tissue now dear students here is a text image showing the medullary hernia clearly showing the double loop of the intestine which showing the w shape of the loop of the intestine that is the medullary hernia now the richard hernia only a portion of the circumference of the bowel becomes strangulated and the little hernia that is the mikel diatom in the content of the hernia sac medullary hernia which shown in the image hernia in w 
or retrograde strangulation, the two loops of the bowel remain in the sac, the connecting the loop remains within the abdomen becomes strangulated. The loop of the hernia looks like a W shape. The loop within the abdomen becomes first strangulated. Now the differential diagnosis, differential diagnosis of the inguinal scrotal feelings are with the insisted hydrocele of the cord. When a portion of the uh, funicular process persists and remains patterned, but the shut off from the tunica vaginal below the peritoneal cavity above it and eventually becomes distended with fluid and presents a cystic swelling either in the inguinal or inguinoscrotal region or in the scrotum. Fluctuation taste and translucency taste will be positive. On cupping, no impulse, so it has no connection with hernia nor with the peritoneal cavity. It persists pulled down, swelling will also come down and mobile. This is a traction test. Testes can be felt apart from the swelling. Dear students, here is a good image of the primary hydrocele, the types of the hydrocele that is the congenital hydrocele, funicular hydrocele, infantile hydrocele, insisted hydrocele of the cord, vaginal hydrocele, which is the commonest type, bilocular hydrocele, and bisect. The hydrocele of the hernial sac. The seven pictures are clearly seen of the every type. This is the another picture showing the normal structure. The second is the inguinal hernia in pink color, and third is the communicating hydrocele. Third is the non-communicating hydrocele. There is the obliteration of the sac, and there is the insisted hydrocele of the cord. There is no connection neither distally nor proximally, and the last. One diagram is the funicular hydrocele of the cord. Now the next entity of the differential diagnosis of the inguinal swellings of the in the hernia that is the varicocele. In the varicocele, the veins of the pampiniform plexus becomes dilated, tortuous, and elongated. Usually on the left side is affected properly because of first left spermatic vein is longer than the right spermatic vein, and the left spermatic vein enters in the left renal vein at the right angle. Left testicular artery arches over the left renal vein to compress it, and the left colon, when loaded, may press on the left testicular vein. Due to these reasons, anatomical reasons, the left side is affected probably more. Clinical features of the varicocele are the aching and dragging pain after prolonged standing. Swelling appears when the patient stands and disappears when it lies down. Impulse on cuffing is more likely a thrill. On palpation, it feels like a bag of worm. If you feel that the tortuous veins of the pampiniform plexus feels like the bag of the worms, a rapid onset of the varicocele on the left side suggests that the carcinoma of the kidney. Dear students, here is a good image on your screen that is the veins of the pampiniform plexus, and in the second image there is an elongated dilatation and tortuosity of the pampiniform plexus that is called as a varicocele. This is the another picture. Which is clearly seen. There is a tortuosity elongation of the pampiniform plexus veins. Now the third entity is the lymph matrix and lymphangiectasis. The lymphatic vessels of the cord become dilated and tortuous, caused by the obstruction due to the filariasis. Fever with simultaneous development of the pain and swelling of the cord. Presence of eosinophilia and living microfilari in the blood drawn at the night are very much diagnostic. Funiculitis. Besides gonococcal infection, funiculitis may be caused by the filariasis, aching in the groin with variable degree of the fever, diffuse lipoma of the cord. The cord feels soft and lobulated, swelling is irreversible, having no impulse on cupping. Next entity is the inflammatory thickening of the cord. Tuberculosis after gives rise to this condition. Epididymis is obviously tender, enlarged, and nodular. Now the seventh point that is the malignant extension of the testes. Easily diagnosed by the presence of the malignant growth in the testes, the cord feels hard and nodular. Torsion of the testes mainly a cause of the swelling of scrotum, but an undescended testes may frequently undergo torsion. Absence of the testes in the scrotum, that is the dragging pain. Retractile testes often diagnosed as the ectopic testes due to the fact that in majority of the cases the testes lies in the superficial inguinal pouch. Strong contraction of the kinematic muscle may pull the testes up. From the sacrum into the development, and the testes can be brought down to the bottom of the sacrum. Now the next point is the differential diagnosis of the groin swellings. That is the femoral hernia. Second is the saphenous varix. It is a secular enlargement of the termination of the long saphenous vein. This swelling usually disappears completely when the patient lies down. Varicosity of the long saphenous vein is usually associated with percussion 
on erogenicity of the long saponiferous vein will transmit an impulse upward the saponiferous pharynx felt by the fingers of the other hands that is the short test sometimes the venous hum can be heard by the stethoscope if you put the your stethoscope on the this saponiferous the venous hum can be heard third entity is the enlarged lymph nodes a search for a possible focus of infection should be made in the drainage area which extends from the umbilicus down to the toes next point is sore abscess usually a cold abscess tracking down from pots disease it is a reducible swelling and gives rise to impulse on cupping it is painless swelling and next point an enlarged sore bursa this bursa lies in front of the hip joint and under the sore major muscles communicates with the hip joints in osteoarthritis of the hip joint this bursa becomes enlarged and produces a tense and cystic swelling below the inguinal ligament this swelling diminishes in size when the hip joint is flexed six point of the differential diagnosis of groin swelling are the undescended and ectopic testes testes is arrested at any point along its normal path of descent ectopic testes in which testes deviated from its usual path of the descent in both these conditions the scrotum of the same side will be empty the testes is recognized by its shape feel and testicular sensation to confirm whether testes is superficial or deep to the abdominal muscles by the rising test undescended testes is always smaller and less developed ectopic testes is usually well developed seventh groin swelling is of the lipoma eight is the hydrocele of the femoral hernial sac the neck of the sac become plugged with omentum or by adhesions and hydrocele of the sac is produced by the secretion of the peritoneum next swelling in the inguinal region is the femoral aneurysm expansile pulsation is the pathognomonic features of this condition now the treatment of the inguinal hernia operation is undoubtedly the treatment of choice in case of inguinal hernia that is the conservative and operative conservative treatment is has no treatment with severe general ill health with a short life expectancy and who refuses operation truss t r u w s truss does not curve a hernia a truss is used to prevent hernia to come out from the superficial inguinal ring now the mode of action a truss acts by pressing the anterior wall against the posterior wall it also passes on the deep inguinal ring and prevents the hernia to come out adhesions gradually develops in the inguinal canal so that the hernia may not find access to come out dangers of using the truss it causes pressure atrophy of the muscles of the inguinal region improper use can lead to obstruction or even strangulation of the hernia if used without complete reduction of hernia may reduce damage to the hernial content that is the bowel improper cleanliness of the inguinal region will produce an unhealthy skin adhesions between the hernial sac and the inguinal canal is not good for the subsequent operation if required chances of strangulation remains so use of truss should always be condemned now the method of use the truss should be used in lying down position after reducing used all throughout the day except at night it should be worn again before getting out of the bed operative treatment there are three types of the operation are usually performed for inguinal hernia these are the herniotomy herniography and hernioplasty herniotomy neck of the sac is transfixed and ligated and sac is excised no repair of the inguinal canal is performed that is in infants and children generally herniotomy is performed in the infants and children herniography consists of herniotomy plus repair of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal this repair is done behind the spermatic cord known as the bassini's repair indication indirect inguinal hernia and third is the hernioplasty means the herniotomy plus reinforce repair of the posterior wall of the inguinal canal by filling the gap between the conjoint tendon and inguinal ligament by autogenous material or by heterogeneous material what is the autogenous material means the patient's own tissue a strip of the facial arta from lateral side of the thigh a strip of the external oblique aponeuroses a flap of the anterior rectus sheet turned down to the cover the inguinal canal skin flap may be used dermoplasty all these are the autogenous material is to be used for the hernioplasty and second is the heterogeneous material for the hernioplasty is used the proline or stainless steel wire has been used for darning proline mesh and stainless steel mesh has also been used now the indication for the indirect hernia in patients with poor muscle tone all cases of direct hernia all cases of recurrent hernia patient who trainers job and suffering from the chronic bronchitis that is the bp well benign enlargement of prostate etc dear students you can refer a textbook also for these hernias there is a very good images and animations and videos 
of the hernia operations on the youtube you can refer it you can watch it now here is the end of our surgery lecture number 43 that is the direct and indirect hernia thank you students